Okay, Dennis. Yes, Jim. We're back for our weekly Wednesday to Wednesday Tesla news. Our weekly recap mm-hmm. of the Tesla news that happened oh. in the week from the dates uh, Wednesday to Wednesday. <laughs> seven days, yes. What happened in these past seven days that started on Wednesday and ended on Wednesday? So surprisingly, we don't actually cover news in order. Don't know why yeah. we do that, but we don't do that. So this I'm week guessing. this week was a kind of a slow week, but kind of significant same time. First uh-huh. piece of news here. Yeah. So Model S got a range increase. I've all been hoping for that 420 miles of range. It's not here yet. Not there yet. Nope. Not there yet. We got 409 miles of range. 11 more miles to go. Why 409 miles of range? Well, coincidentally. Most, yeah, coincidentally and most likely, it's just to barely beat Lucid, their upcoming rival. Lucid unveiled six. their Lucid unveiled the Lucid Air with every just about every spec beating the Model S, correct? Yeah. And nearly instantaneously, Tesla started updating the Model S specs to just barely surpass that of the compet- comparable Lucid Air. And dropping the price. And dropping the price significantly, because that was also a big part of the Lucid Air's unveil was its low price. I don't remember what the starting price of the Lucid Air was, do you? It was like 78000 plus a $7,500 tax rate for the very cheapest one. So we actually saw two price drops on the Model S in between then and now, right? There was one that took it to like 72 or so, but now we're at 69,420. All is right in the world. The magical can, numbers have been hit. Can never change that number again. And I have to can retire the car it. with that price. But we're very close to 420 miles. Uh, hope hope That's to it. see it soon. The Model S will be complete at that point. We're moving <laughs> on to the next car. 69,420 or 420 miles of range. That's it. So this hasn't... I don't think this has been shown on tesla's site yet right this is just news breaking from a leaked window sticker yeah uh coincidentally i mean interestingly enough with that window sticker is that the uh efficiency actually went down just slightly uh because the current one has 117 mpge and that one the 409 mile version has 116 mpge so obviously not a huge decrease in efficiency but it does point to the fact that there's possibly a little bit more battery uh, battery in there, and it's you know just they not as efficient. Just one more cell in there, just, they to just get that. yeah. They just put a couple more in there, and uh, one hundred and one now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait and see. A hundred and a half, yeah, but yeah. The so. Model Y just got a new battery. We reported that last week. Mm-hmm. So it's nothing new. Over. We, yeah. we seem to be updating batteries. As you do. Sticking with the Model S, the Fremont Police Department has been testing a police cruiser of a Model S for the last year. Yeah. It was a 2014 85. 85. 85. Not an 85D, not an 85P. Just an 85 2014. We bought it last year for around $62,000, mm-hmm. which today sounds absolutely ridiculous, seeing as how you buy a brand new one for just eight grand more. That doesn't include the uh, all the stuff they, the, the price of the stuff they had to add on to it, too. Yeah, so when you make a police cruiser, you have to, you know, make it a police cruiser and add wow. stuff like lights <laughs> and tech that, you know, police cruisers use (laughs) so that took the price up uh over a hundred thousand dollars for this car the reason they had to buy a used 2014 at the time was because that's just their their budget they were trading in a i believe it was a dodge challenger or dodge charger sounds about right they wanted to test out an ev program and see if they could start introducing evs into the police fleet so it's been a year and we according to them the test passed and they are going to start moving forward with transitioning to some electric cars coincidentally fremont is 
one of the cities that houses uh is it the tesla headquarters or just one of the factories no that's the fremont factory the fremont factory is in fremont california fremont, damn i would have thought you you heard that scoop here <laughs> So a big part of this test was looking at costs of and course. comparing them to gasoline cars. Costs yep. from gasoline savings to maintenance. Mm -hmm. uh, we did see gasoline savings, of course. Yeah. Of course. But maintenance, they actually blew well past what they expected, what their initial ex expected estimate was. Mm-hmm. According to them, it was due to a lot of tires being burned. Tires. Because tires. They, they used the uh, 85 to help train officers on like a pursuit course. So obviously that was hard, intense driving. So it kind of skewed the results because they were just using that one car, I guess, the entire year to do pursuit training. And obviously that kills tires like no tomorrow. So they had to continuously get new tires and... I'm sure the Model S doesn't have the cheapest of tire options around. But even when a, a, accounting for the increase in maintenance costs, when they added up the maintenance costs and the energy costs together, the Model S still came out to be cheaper than the comparable Ford. Yes. So. Kind of. The end of no, I'm I'm seeing it right here. It says actual annual cost of energy and average fuel and maintenance repair cost. The Model S was fifty nine oh one, and the Ford was eight thousand forty eight. Yes, but in in those numbers, they're excluding to account for something pretty significant, which is the actual cost of the car, which was Correct. twenty thousand dollars less, and that car has depreciated drastically in the last year. I think you could yeah. buy that same two thousand fourteen for half the price now. Well, that is true. So, yes and no. I mean, everyone runs numbers the way they want to run numbers, but reality is it works for them, so that's a good thing. We're going to see police cars on the road. Yeah. We'll have uh, officers fight each other for who gets... It's only 265 faster. miles of range for that 2014. Obviously, you know, assuming that the trial works and now they want to buy newer ones... You know, maybe Tesla can make a fleet deal with the Fremont Police Department. Who knows? And they can get into some 409-mile range Model S's. Well, they said the 265 was more than enough for their Yep. 11-hour like shifts or whatnot. So. Yeah, that's the thing. People, people think that you can't have electric cars for police cars, but I mean, the reality is police cars have a lot of downtime. Yeah. There's a lot of downtime with police cars. There's a lot of time to charge. And I'm sure that car doesn't actually get 265 miles of range anymore given how old it is so even then with the battery degradation it was still enough for them so on the screen here is their initial estimates for the cost comparison between the tesla and their regular gasoline ford that they released last year so take a look at that if you want moving on to the next elon musk went on a interview sort of was a guest a, a guest oh. in a german battery conference yeah. it actually it wasn't it wasn't it was just a european battery conference i guess we're, they're speaking english so there must have been some a lot of information was revealed there most of the tesla news of the week Quite probably comes that. from that 20 minute interview with elon musk mm -hmm. uh i'm hoping that he didn't just you know forget all these numbers and these are new numbers <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a lot of numbers have changed on us so, Tesla's first battery, battery cell factory, will produce up to 250 gigawatt hours, mm -hmm. which is the current world capacity. Thoughts on that, Dennis? I mean, big batteries, big bucks, am I right? <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, obviously, you know, the, the main constraint of any electric car company is how many batteries they can produce. The more batteries you can produce, the more electric cars you can get on the road. So it's been a lot of battery shortages. A lot of battery shortages. So with, um, you know, Tesla during battery day had some pretty, uh, out, you know, optimistic claims of how many, how much battery capacity they could produce in the next 10 years. Um, so uh, in, in orders of magnitude of... Uh, what they're doing now so 
you know you you you, you gotta you gotta make the big battery somewhere and uh they're choosing the berlin factory to be the largest in the world at the time and maybe for the foreseeable future because i don't know and who else is competing. they're gonna do their own mining as well right in lithium yeah they're, they're trying to get their yeah. own lithium i don't know I, I i don't remember if it extends to europe i know they're i, I i'm gonna be honest i don't even know if there's lithium mines in the european continent uh maybe there will be but i feel like their plans for the time being was more limited to uh north america but i guess they can send the lithium over to europe if they mine it here so China it should be noted everything it should be noted that just about every ev that's expected to come that has estimated annual outputs are limited not by how many people are expected to buy the EV, rather battery supply. Like mm-hmm. the Mach-E is limited to what was it, 40 or 50,000 cars a year? Mm-hmm. So we've kind of capped out our battery supplies. So in order to continue selling more electric cars and not just stay at a constant, something like this needs to be done. We've seen the IP. I pace and Etron actually having to pause production because they just didn't yeah. have because LG couldn't give them the batteries. Now this, this this would easily put Tesla over a million cars a year. Oh like yeah, potential very easily. Again, it's already just, doubling the current world output. So, yeah, and that's <laughs> just, just one factory. Yeah, just just imagine every EV made last year, Tesla could make next year, <laughs> assuming this is done soon. But it's probably many many months to go. Actually, yeah. Giga, Giga Berlin has been under construction for over a year now, right? Yeah, but you know how Tesla is. They'll start producing stuff before the factory is even completely done, and they'll just kind of continue out production as more of the factory gets done. Yeah. The initial Giga factory is, what, like 10% done? Oh, man. Like, what, uh, 20% most? It's still got a long way to go on that one. A long way. At the same, at the same conference, Elon talked about the upcoming model 2 it's not a certain name it's just well, what we don't know if it's people have been calling two. it well uh, kind of i mean we do i mean not necessarily it's open to interpretation well you you're actually right because the model the model 2 was supposed to be designed in in uh, giga shanghai well, we for, don't know that for one the either. chinese market we don't know that one either. Well, I don't I don't know the names, but I'm just saying these are two separate cars because we did hear Elon at one point say that there was going to be a unique car for European markets, and we have heard them state a unique car for the Chinese markets. We don't know, Chinese and Asian markets. We don't know if it's the same car. I doubt it. But we do know both are a compact car. Um, initially, we saw that the Asian market one would be designed in Giga Shanghai. Mm-hmm. But now we know of a, another one that's being designed in Giga Berlin. We don't know if it's the same one or if it's two separate ones. My boy Dennis doubts it. Well, I so would hope we, it's... we have the Model 2 and the Model 2.5. Th- <laughs> what if neither of them are Model 2s? Well, I don't think Model 2 is going to be an actual name. I understand, but the but the $25,000 small car is... What if it's a California base and then each... And then Berlin gets a regional model, and then China gets a regional model or something of their own creations. Yeah. Plus, we still have the small, a small uh, pickup truck possibly too for the European market. There's a lot of cars coming out all of a sudden. There and, is. Cybertruck's yeah, still not out either. I don't know how to keep track of 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 all of them. You know, it's funny when when Tesla unveiled the Cybertruck, I recall Elon stating that they were going to like pause the unveiling of cars and products and focus on the products that they had already planned, like the Roadster, Cybertruck and Semi. And since then, we have neither the Roadster, Cybertruck nor Semi. (laughs) And they've they've announced like four other cars. (laughs) Yeah. And a tequila brand. (laughs) And a tequila brand and short shorts. And short shorts. Now they're... So... Don't know what this car is going to be, but it well, is a he, he, he European... posited a small electric hatchback. Possibly. Small electric hatchback. Maybe. Um, perhaps. Is the Model 3 considered a hatchback? No, right? No. Is the Model 3? No. No, the, the Y is, though. E... And the S. Eh, no, that's a liftback. 
The That's S not is the same thing. The S is a liftback. I think you're making that name up. I'm calling the Model S a hatchback. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> Google it right now. Google a liftback right now. I, I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> so at, at the same event, we also had uh, talks in the semi. Elon mentioned eventually going to 1,000 uh, kilometers of range, which is 621 miles. Yep. Current semi ranges are 300 and 500, two different versions of the car. Yes. Uh, neither of them have been made yet. I mean, there's some on the road, but they're not available for sale. Well, clearly they've been made, bro. They're on the road. Well, yeah. Prototypes. They just pop into existence. Prototypes. I mean, we don't know about the range of those prototypes. We still don't have mega chargers for those cars. There's still a long way to go with semi-development. Hopefully the new battery supplies and battery factories and lithium mining is going to help that because the semi truck has actually just continuously been delayed due to battery constraints. Elon at one point again mentioned that for every semi that they would build, they would have to take away from Model 3s and Model Ys. So it was not really a net positive to build the semi and that's why it's been continuously delayed. Yeah. Was announced in 2017. Yeah. Three years ago. Still not here. Three years ago. Question Even is, with you, all those delays, there's no... Do you no think this 621 there. miles of range is going to be a third model, or are they upping the range of their initial uh, It's going to be a third model that isn't released initially. Well, well you heard it here first. My boy Dennis yeah. has opinions. That's what I said. That's my opinion. That's what, that's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot of hope for the semi, bro. I yeah, just wanted to come out. A lot of emissions spent in the trucking industry. It would be nice to have them electrified. A lot of people argue against electric semi trucks and or for hydrogen. And the hydrogen versus electric race seems to be underway. Uh, it does look like one will win over diesel. Because as far as I've seen, diesel doesn't really have any competitive advantages when compared to this uh, utopia of mega chargers and whatnot. Right, as long as there's an actual yeah, as long as as long as there's a charging infrastructure, because semi trucks have to stop regardless. They're only allowed to drive X amount of hours and all that. Yep. Plus, you know, if Tesla's robo taxi network works out, it only makes sense to enter the trucking industry where they could just have self driving semi trucks. Ah, the robo semi marketplace cutting the cost drastically which people seem to forget about when comparing the pricing of something like nikola to the tesla semi remember trevor going off those on those rants about how hydrogen just made more sense but tesla's long-term goal is robo taxis so that's a big savings of a few tens of thousands of dollars a year in employment savings We'll see. One day. One day it'll actually come out. We're waiting for it. The Model Y might have a range increase. Ooh. Might just have one in the works. Ooh. So Green, the Tesla hacker. Yeah. That's oh just boy. what I'm going to This what I'm gonna call Green from now on, the Tesla hacker. <laughs> hacker man. Hacker man. Hack, Mr. Mr. Tesla hacker man. He has seen that there is a Model Y efficiency package coming. Yeah. We previously saw this same efficiency package. I, I did air quotes there. You didn't see it. Okay. Thanks for telling me. For the Model 3. It was the Model 3 efficiency uh, package. And that was what actually eventually became the larger uh, battery size that we just reported. 82 kilowatts, was it? Mm-hmm. So we're just assuming that this is the same and this is the software needed for the new battery size. So right. the Model Y, the Model 3 was increased from what to what? To, I mean, sorry, 323 to 353. So it was like a 10% increase. Pretty big, 30 miles extra. Thanks to new battery cells. Mm-hmm. So if we have a 10% increase on the Model Y, we can expect it to be what? Around 250? Hopefully. I mean 350. Sorry. 
I'd be scared for a second. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> well, Mata, why am I missing? Is that low? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're essentially this. I'm sure they're using the same battery and the same underpinnings. So I would imagine a 345 to 350. Do you think the uh, final range? The Model 3 and the Model Y will eventually be the same range as the Model S and X. Do you think they're ever just going to hit a, a standardized range? Just everyone stops at 500? Or will we always have this difference? Uh, I feel like there's always going to be a difference. If if the ceiling for the Model S is going to be 500 miles, then I feel like the 3 and the Y will be limited down to 400, 430, something like that. I don't know if we'll pass 420 on the Model S, especially with how small these range updates have been. We're increasing in increments of handfuls. Yeah. So it's not like it was before where they would just add 25 or 50 miles in one software update. It's it's gotten to that point where it's starting to stall off. It's starting to hit the ceiling. I I don't think they'll hit 420 without adding more battery cells. So they'll just sneak a couple cells in. <laughs> no one will know. Just also in Model Y news, mm-hmm. the Model 3 refreshes that we saw, was that two weeks back? Uh, there, thereabouts are starting to be seen in the Model Y, as expected. Right, you would you would hope. Funny enough, they actually started in the Model Y, went to the Model Three, but added a little bit more stuff, and now the Model Y is getting what the Model Three added. <laughs> if if you could keep up with that, <laughs> it, they're just they're trying to keep things interesting for us. So the Model Three received the new center console, uh, double laminated glass, laminated glass. Uh, Auto dimming, s- side mirrors, s- yeah. USB. a new center console. The USB itself. You just said the new center console twice. Yeah, but that was the big thing. Right. That was like that was the thing. The new center it was, console. It was a center console, the center console, and the center console. That was it. That was really it. So the Model Y got all of those updates <laughs> except the center console. The center console. <laughs> <laughs> So really, it didn't get updated at all. <laughs> oh yeah, it has an and it has a stainless steel screw wheel now too. Can't forget that. I I don't know who who asked for that. I mean, it, it, the plastic one felt a little cheap. Is it actually stainless steel or is it plastic that looks like stainless? Steel? I I I don't have one in front of me. Well, imagine it for me and tell me if it's. I hope it's stainless steel. <laughs> I hope if it's if it's stainless steel if it's actual stainless steel I'll be fine. But if it's just plastic that's colored like stainless steel, then then we. I mean, it's probably plastic guess. that's colored. It, it, so who so, asked? So Frederick Lambert, I don't know if you heard of him. He says silver scroll wheels. So. Hmm. Maybe they're real silver. <laughs> Even more unlikely. Well, that that's really it for the week would have been a, a much shorter week in review if Elon didn't decide to speak for 20 minutes uh, towards the end of this week. <laughs> <laughs> would have been a much more awkward show with like only three things to talk about. But thank you, Elon, for coming out and allowing us to pad out the length of this. We, we would have found a way to make this show anyway. We would have I mean, yeah. We would have just, you know, read you Elon Musk autobiography. You can always count on us. For our Wednesday to Wednesday Tesla weekly we, we would recap, have, <laughs> we would have had uh, a ten-minute debate about scroll wheels on cars. <laughs> Believe you me, we would have done it, but you were spared from that conversation because Elon decided to actually give something of substance. 